For me, this is an independent film you must see, but I think others may not agree. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I uh, hope you're having a good day today. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how our week goes. Uh, I am pleased to welcome onto the podcast Dahlia Schweitzer. How are you doing today, Dahlia? I'm pretty mad at you, actually. What? Because I made you watch a movie? You made me watch a movie, a really bad movie. Okay. All right. You say it's, look, let me, first of all, we should, we should say uh, we've been assigning, assigning each other movies to watch. And you're not watching any of the ones I assigned to you. So. Yeah, yes, I did. I did watch Office Killer um, <laughs> from a previous episode. But this movie, look, Kave Zahidi, if you don't know anything about the filmmaker Kave Zahidi, he is a filmmaker that is, I would describe as very unusual uh, in terms of his vision. And I like, I like weird. He did a movie called In the Bathtub of the World, um, which was uh, when he was doing a vlog. He actually was one of the first guys who did a vlog. And he did a vlog the year that 9-11 happened. And he just recorded himself for a few minutes every day. And then he edited that into a movie. This movie, I Am a, a, a Sex Addict, is Kaveh Zahidi, his sort of heartfelt exposing himself as he is technically a sex addict, but it's also this where he examines almost in Annie Hall type fashion, all of his previous relationships and where they went awry. I happen to think that the way that it's approached, it's very mixed media. So he uses real footage of himself. Then he uses himself in scenes where he casts actresses to play his previous girlfriends kind of acting out what went wrong in the relationship. So it's part experimental film, part documentary, but it's also narrative. It's sort of this mixed media. I happen to know that a lot of people who are <laughs> in filmmakers like this movie because of the approach. Kaveh may not be the most likable person, but he also did this web series, which I think is brilliant called the show with no name where part of the show is he can't come up with a name for his show. Uh, so it's like a show about nothing, um, but it's actually about the television industry. But in any case, I love this movie, I Am a Sex Addict, because I feel like he used these tools to tell this story that in the end, the way he bookends the film, which is what really makes it work for me, um, I found it very heartfelt, especially because he can be so unlikable, but self-effacing. There's that one scene where he says, okay, imagine this is San Francisco in the 90s, and imagine I'm in my 20s. And then he takes like his bald spot in the back of his head and spray paints hair. <laughs> like, come on. Okay, so Dahlia, I made you watch it. There's my sort of plea for like why this movie I think is relevant. I think it's inspiring, especially um, how revealing he is about his own failings, um, just as a human being, how he went to therapy to try to wrestle with his sex addiction. You don't agree with me on any of this. Okay, I have recommended this. Okay, this is not an easy movie to get, too. It's not available digitally any way that I'm aware that you can purchase. I do know you can buy used copies on DVD for about 10 bucks. So, Dahlia, I, with that, I did not expect to do such a long preamble. My apologies. But I want people to know about this film. Your, your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm amused by the fact that I feel like you're a little bit defensive. Um, about this movie. And I, yeah, feel, yeah. <laughs> I feel like maybe when you've recommended it to other people, they've at least pretended they've liked it. No, they genuinely look, it's, it's among a group of indie filmmakers that I know, like that's a movie like, Oh, like, look what he did. Like, I like the use of animation. I like that. It's like this, like, is this like parts of this, like feel like an experimental film, but it's also partially documentary and then partially blurring the line between like, it's also very meta. There's a, there's a scene where he's like, he cast a woman to play one of his ex-girlfriends and then discovers that she may be an adult film actress. And then it shows him doing this investigation where it's like, you see the girl, then you see like, there's like some adult film expo in town where he's filming and she's in town and he's like, how did this, what? Like, so it even steps out. Like while he's working on the movie, you see him working on the movie. It's look, I think, I think 
okay, maybe I shouldn't be recommending this movie to people now that I think about it. But but Kaveh Zahidi is a really fascinating filmmaker to me. I've just long been a fan. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it happens during podcasts. It happens. Look, that you know what? People calling that happens during regular television shows. It does. So, it does. It's true. It does. So, um, I just for, always forget that my it rings on my other laptop. So oh, my phone is silenced, but Jorge was just calling. I don't know who Jorge. Okay, is. Well, we'll find out what happens. Okay, but okay, now I I, I got to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah. Well, um, so I used to date men. And yeah. watching this movie reminded me why I stopped. Oh, well, okay. So this hits home for you. So it really hit home. And I I, I pulled up some screenshots um, from one moment where I was feeling particularly violent. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it was against you or against him, but there was just a lot of rage about the patriarchy. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so he's a sex addict and he's having sex with people. And there's a moment where he has this, it's like, it's just this epiphany, this like eye opening, earth shattering moment um, where he says, you know, he'd been having this like sexual affair with this woman. And he says, he says um, in voiceover to us, I looked into her eyes and I saw her soul. Until then, she had just been someone that I wanted something from. But at that moment, I suddenly saw that she was a real human being with needs and feelings of her own. Right. And, and that this is not said with comedic delivery. Right. Right. And I was just like, there's so many men mm -hmm. who go through this that it was just like, you know, I... I don't need to devote another minute of my life to watching this like dumb dude who like he's yes he's pretending that he's like intellectual and self-effacing and artistic and whatever but really he's a dumb dude who's like sleeping around um and my tolerance for that you know especially with what we've been through with the last four years with the guy and you know right charge, it's just like my tolerance for like straight dudes and their epiphanies about things that they should have figured out like when they were five years old, it's just right. like, I can't, I can't do it. So maybe something else that he had done would be appealing. But like, I was thinking about what you were saying about the mixed media and we both have Ethan Minsker in common mm -hmm. and like Ethan Minsker does not better, I have to say. Okay, that's a fair point. I think also you have to what 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 I like about this film is probably the reason you don't like it. Tell me. By that I mean he is flawed and what I like about that is he's unafraid to show like these are flaws. You recognize that those are flaws, but I think it's boring to t to have narratives about people that are perfect or virtuous because because I find that uninteresting. I mean, who knows where we, we're all in a different place on our journey, wherever that may be. But what I'm saying is, is that I find it fascinating that this guy took some horrible flaws. He hires prostitutes. He, do, he does, I mean, this is a terrible person. I'm not defending anything that he did or said in the movie, but the fact that he's willing to show this in a truthful and honest way, I think is fascinating, right? Like, so that that's the thing that I actually find in, now you hate this. <laughs> no, just, it's, it's, it's very hard for me to keep a straight face. Cause I know okay, but I, you're on your high horse and you're talking about the like, you know, the, the tragic flawed hero and how this is like an essential part of good cinema and all that as if it's something that like, I didn't already know. Uh, I didn't make well, I didn't make any of those claims. I'm just saying that this in particular, like holy shit, this guy is a dirtbag. I'm not like did not, and I, I think even he would tell you that as well. Like, and here's how he got to the place at the end of the film where he's in a healthy relationship, but it was to go through the sort of Dante's Inferno of effed upness, right? I think. I expect more from my flaws. 
Okay. All um, right. I um I want more nuance than I'm a typical bro who forgets that women are people. Well, he's I will say this, he's not a typical bro. I mean, the guy is facetiously. Right, right. Yes, exactly. I mean, he's gangly, skinny. I mean, like, you know, I I I I don't know if you could call him handsome. He's no. an unusual looking person. I'd say he's in the um on the scale of like Brad Pitt to Woody Allen, he's more to the Woody Allen side. Fair. Um, if not maybe pa uh, further uh, beyond Woody Allen. I'm just saying I, I, I like seeing, I like redemption arcs, right? And I feel like this story is at the end of the day, you know, if you get through the slog of, you know, <laughs> it's it's a redemption arc and i feel like those are those are stories that appeal to me you know like and so i i like this story because at the end i think it's very emotional that he he has he's figured it out yeah it's at the very very end of the film but um yeah no i i, I found it appealing My See, now, I feel really like, now i feel like i i need to redeem myself and get ethan to watch this movie to see what he thinks do it. And then maybe we can have a conversation, the three of us. We, okay. All right. Yeah. We can have a conversation, <laughs> the three of us. All right. Uh, Dahlia Schweitzer, where can people, now that we completely disagree on this movie, I am a sex addict. I'm going to recommend it. And I'm also going to recommend you make up your own mind. She hates it, but that's okay. Uh, Dahlia, where can people find you? Um, on the internet. Just Google my name. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Support Film Threat by going to our Film Threat shop. Um, I would appreciate if you if you did that. Also, I want to thank our sponsor, Storyblocks. Go to storyblocks.com slash film threat. Storyblocks makes it possible for us to do this, uh, this podcast. And look, here's all sorts of other things that you should do on the bottom of the page. I never even ask. Every YouTuber always does this. Like, subscribe, share, hit that like button. Subscribe if you ran across this. Blah, blah, blah. I feel, I feel, I feel like I'm harassing my listeners and or viewers if viewers if you're watching this on youtube but to uh support uh the podcast but um where else are you going to find out about my cat weird, coming to say hi about weird movies about sex addicts all right <laughs> yeah i will talk to you soon and right, uh, you owe me one all right i okay i owe you one on this <laughs>